Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to this webinar. And in today's session, we will examine the delivery and assessment of the Synoptic project in the subject area of performance skills and art and design for the level one slash two technical award. But firstly, a few introductions. My name is Kelly Johnson and I'm a provider development officer here at NCFE. My background is vocational education and I have 15 years of experience of working in the FE sector in various roles, including a teacher, a curriculum leader, and a curriculum operations manager. I specialize mainly in the subjects of sport, health and fitness, and I've educated young people from level one to foundation degree level, including A levels. My role is to support centers through the planning, onboarding, and further CPD opportunities for NCFE qualifications, but in particular, the VCERT qualifications with a focus on promoting and advancing learning. I'm also joined today by Graham Lees, who is a lead external quality assurer for arts and music and a chief examiner. Graham has worked for NCFE since 2013. And before this, he lectured in music and performance and technology in a large FE college. Hello and all. Thanks, Graham. So the plan for this webinar is to firstly provide you with a summary of preparing for the Synoptic Project, including accessing the Synoptic Project Brief and our approach to awarding for this academic session. We'll examine the Synoptic Project, in particular an overview and the structure of the tasks. We'll also include tips for delivery and sample learner work to show the breakdown of grades. The marking, assessment and feedback will then be explained, including appropriate and inappropriate feedback and how you can make your feedback more effective. We'll also explain the IQA process and the documentation that you can use, including the grading calculator, submitting your grades to the portal and resubmissions. We'll also explain the EQA support that is available to you and your centres and the process for EQA reviews. And finally, there'll be an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. OK, so let me begin then with a summary of preparing for the Synoptic project, including our approach to awarding and assessments this year and some information about the portal. Firstly, I'll provide a quick overview of the controlled assessment. That means the Synoptic project. The Synoptic project contributes 60% to the final VCERT qualification grade and can only be completed in the year of certification. The project is set by NCFE and the tasks are unable to be altered in any way and it is internally graded by the centres. NCFE will perform and external quality assurance check the synoptic project. The full content from the specification does need to be covered prior to beginning the synoptic project and learners will have to be booked onto the controlled assessment by the portal in order to access the brief which is also on the portal. A different synoptic project is usually released every December and learners have one opportunity to resubmit. Now to note, this overview is when the internal assessment is business as usual, that is, that the internal assessment is in a non-COVID-19 academic year. Please note though that the adaptations are in place for this academic session and I'm going to go into more detail about these on the next slide. So on this slide, I will now briefly explain our approach to awarding for this session. We have updated our assessment variation process to allow centres to use additional test centre locations. We've adapted our assessments so they can be delivered in line with public health guidelines. All relevant qualification content must still be delivered and assessment criteria met. And to further support centres, significant adaptations have been made to the conditions of the VCERT Technical Awards and Optic project this year. We have adapted the delivery and completion conditions so that it can now be completed by learners remotely where required. We have removed the requirement to complete it within a set number of hours. We have removed the requirement of completion under control conditions. And we have brought forward the release of the synoptic project brief so centres can plan their own delivery timescales around their own delivery plan. This year, it has been released on the 1st of November and learners, as I said, need to be registered and booked onto the controlled assessment so that it can be viewed and accessed via the portal. We've also removed the timescales around the submission deadlines, but there is a deadline for having the final grades onto the portal, which is the 27th of May, 2022. 
learners should have an opportunity to undertake two submissions. So a first submission and a resubmission, but the first submission will be managed internally by the centre and it is the final resubmission grade that should be entered onto the portal. So grades for the learner's first submission do not need to be entered on the portal, but assessment records should be kept up to date to provide a full audit trail of the resubmission. The EQA review deadline needs to take place before the 31st of July 2022 to allow for results to be confirmed by the end of July for performance tables. As I explained on the previous slide, the Synoptic Project Brief is now live as it was released on the 1st of November of this year, in line with our approach to awarding for this academic session. To access and view the Synoptic Project, you need to go to your qualification specification page on Qualhub. Then go to Login and select Portal. You will need a portal login if you don't have one, your exams officer can usually arrange this for you. Then you click on bookings. And as I've said, your learners do need to be booked onto the controlled assessment in order to access it and view it. Once your learners are booked onto the controlled assessment, it can then be viewed in and accessed in viewed controlled assessment. If you require any further support, do check out our portal support guide or contact our customer support team who can help with this if this is needed by contacting them either on by email at customer support at ncfe.org.uk or by telephone on 0191 239 8000. I'm now going to hand over to Graham who will talk you through in more detail the adaptations for this academic session for performance skills and art and design. Hi all, um, thanks for attending this session. Um, so just to start looking at the adaptations that have been made um, in recognition of the uh, of the, the chaos of the last 18 months or so. Um, we'll start by looking at the uh, level one to technical awarding performance skills. So um, adaptations made in this session um, to allow for, for variations. Um, unlike previous sessions, uh, an ensemble performance is not required. So a solo performance only is required from the learners. The performance should be between two and five minutes in length, uh, which is obviously uh, significantly shorter than if we were to include an ensemble performance. Um, just to make the point here that the solo performance can be accompanied by other musicians and can be undertaken in the context of um, a group performance. Um, just the consideration of the uh, material is required in terms of defining a solo performance. Uh, we'll come back to some of that as we move through the tasks as well. And obviously, if you have any questions on that, do, do feel free to put uh, a question in the box there. Um, moving on to an overview of the art and design adaptations. Um, as you can see, a similar kind of idea. So as per previous sessions, um, the proposal created uh, for the, the learner's piece um, still includes a minimum of two pieces in two disciplines. However, in contrast to previous sessions, only one piece of art and design in one discipline is required, um, and that's to be selected from the proposal as opposed to the, the two pieces in two disciplines which would normally be required. So, um, moving back to Kelly for the moment. Thanks, Graham. So I'm now going to use this as an opportunity to talk you through our sample and past synoptic projects. And then I will hand back to Graham, who will provide further details on the structure and an overview of the tasks for performance skills and art and design. So this next slide is an example synoptic project from the art and design VSERT qualification. It had a scenario of a team being appointed to commission a range of work based on the theme of the natural world to suit a modern style building. And the brief included tasks like carrying out research and finding examples of a range of work by artists and designers associated with the modernist art movement. Analyzing the research in relation to its effectiveness of the artists or designers use of visual language and how it represents the theme. Carrying out the stages required to create the art and design proposal and then creating a response to realize the creative intention for a minimum of two pieces of artwork in two disciplines. 
learners were required to demonstrate their technical skills and abilities through the use and application of visual language, material, media, techniques and equipment. And the learner log is something that the learners must complete during their project. They will keep a record of the different activities that they undertook and the resources and time that they de dedicated to it. And at the end, they will evaluate their project. And this will allow the learners to achieve assessment objective five, which is to manage and evaluate their project. We also have some sample and past synoptic projects for the level one slash two technical award in performance skills in the assessment materials tab on Qualhub. Prior to assessing and even be uh, before beginning the synoptic project, you may find it useful to look at some of the sample portfolios which contain learner work that we have available on Qualhub. On the qualification page in the assessment materials tab, you will find some example work graded at different levels. This can give you a good idea of what the different grades would look like. In these documents, you will find the evidence produced by the learner, the feedback the assessor has given, and the comments from an external quality assurer justifying why it has achieved that grade. Unfortunately, we don't have any sample portfolios for performance skills. We were going to use the 2020 learner work that was submitted to produce some, but COVID-19 prevented the submission of performance skills portfolios. Perhaps, though, you have your own internal sample portfolios of learner work that you can use. I'm now going to hand back over to Graham, who will provide further details on the structure and an overview of the tasks for performance skills and art and design. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so the performance skills, uh, just to, to look at the performance skills synoptic project first. In terms of the evidence required, the tasks are based on a given theme for the session, and you'll see examples of that in the in the past synoptic projects. Um, the themes are by necessity wide in order to cover the variety of disciplines uh, given in the specification. The tasks, um, there are five tasks in the synoptic project. First one being a video presentation communicating plans, including performance and pre-production roles in response to the brief. So here we'd expect the learner to uh, create a video presentation to give their thoughts and initial plans uh, regarding the brief. A baseline skills assessment and rehearsal plan. Uh, so here we would expect documentation of the learner's uh, skills at the start of the project um, and a rehearsal plan uh, in place to undertake the performance. Technical plans, including a stage plan, a technical specification, technical rehearsal plan, and an event itinerary. So all the documentation that might be required to undertake the performance in technical terms. A promotion plan and promotional material. So here we're looking for the learner to consider um, how they are gonna undertake promotion of their performance event and the materials resulting from that and in this case a solo performance recorded on video as previously noted between two and five minutes in length moving on to the art and design evidence you can see a, a similar selection of tasks so again the tasks are based on a given theme for the session um, the first task is that the learner should interpret the requirements of the brief and provide commentary upon that. They should then carry out research and look at examples of research and where that research has been drawn from. They should find examples of work by artists and designers relevant to the theme and to their research. Analyse the use of visual language in the examples they have found. So there's um, an element of analysis here um, regarding the theme and how they might anticipate using that in their work. Analyse how their research represents the theme. So here the learners are starting to uh, zone in on how they're going to uh, how they're going to use their research to inform their own work. They're then going to create a proposal for their work and then they're going to go on and create a piece. Okay. So now I'm going to talk you through the marking and assessment of the synoptic project. And we're going to look at some examples here as well. So in terms of assessment, uh, when it comes to assessing the synoptic project, it should be done holistically. 
You'll be judging the project as a whole and it will be assessed against each of the assessment objectives. And you can see there that each assessment objective has four grading descriptors, which are on the synoptic project brief. Descriptors have been written for each assessment objective and assessors will use the grading descriptors to determine the banding decision for each assessment objective. So here we're looking for you to make a banding decision based on the language used within the descriptors. The learners will be able to see these grading descriptors as they are on the synoptic project brief, so the assessment is completely transparent. There are four bands that can be awarded um, in, each of the, uh, in each of the descriptors, and that will be not yet achieved, band one, band two, and band three. Um, as you can see, not yet achieved implies no rewardable material, and you can see that one, two, and three ramp up in terms of the differentiation of evidence. Okay. So moving on to um, the art and design brief, we've got an example here um, of some learners' work. So you'll see um, that the, uh, the learner has produced annotations upon the project brief um, and what the learner has done here, you can see in the, the text boxes surrounding the project brief, they've highlighted some key terms and they've commented on them. So what the learner has done here, there's three, three areas really the learner has explored. So they've identified the key themes from the brief, they've used annotations as evidence of that thought process, and that commentary allows you as the assessor to look at that as uh, evidence. So the learner then has moved on to carrying out research, finding examples related to the theme. And here you can see that the learner is, uh, has conducted research on the movement related to the brief. In this case, it was uh, regards futurism, I believe. Um, so the learner has produced some work regarding the overall nature of the movement. They've then gone to consider a range of examples. Um, what the learner's done here is looked at some particular examples of artists' work um, and looked at them in terms of, uh, of the uh, history of the work and the themes. Okay. The learner's then moved on to create a proposal. So this is the learner's first um, task element, really. Um, the learner has created a proposal that relates the theme and research together. Um, importantly, the proposal identifies work in two disciplines, which the learner will use as a springboard for their own practical activities. The learner then moves on to present evidence of development of their work. So, um, Again, just to, to reiterate, in this session, learners are required to select and produce one final piece. Okay. So you'll see that the learners uh, work here shows evidence of experimentation. You'll see the sort of uh, development from sketches, pencil sketches down to colorized render. Um, the learner also provides commentary on visual language, materials, media, techniques and equipment used to meet the brief via experimentation. The learner here has presented their final piece. So we've got a final piece related to the theme and we've got some commentary against the final piece in, in this uh, example as well. So you can see the, uh, the clear development there from the, the learner's initial work to this final piece and how it might relate to the theme. Throughout this, the learner log, uh, the learner, sorry, has produced a fairly detailed learner log um, with an ongoing commentary and timeline. Um, the commentary again discusses the use of visual language, media, experimentation, and also shows the planning and development process in some detail. Within the learner log, the learner then goes on to evaluate the project and evaluates their own performance. Um, in this case, the evaluation is largely summative and there's some elements of ongoing evaluation within the logbook as well, uh, which as an assessor, you would look at holistically. Okay. I'm just going to pause there and see if we've got any specific questions on, on that for the moment. 
no we all we all okay with that at the moment brilliant super okay then um i will move then on to the performance skills um remembering our, our five tasks for the performance skills here so the first uh, task evidence would be the learner's presentation you'll see how this mirrors to the art and design um proposal um so just to add some detail here what we're expecting is a, a video presentation from the learner um, in this case the theme given in the synoptic project was power um, so this is a text of the of the learners uh, what the learner delivered on the video i should say um, so there's no requirement for the presentation to a live audience the presentation could be pre-recorded um, it could be a recording or a verbal presentation um, written as video, or sorry, written and video, I should say. Um, in this case, the learners produced concise commentary related to uh, specific three areas, uh, regards performance role, pre-production role, um, and also identifies the performance space and relates to the logistics of the performance. Um, in this example, we could therefore apply assessment against AO1 and AO3. It's worth noting that the assessment should be holistic across the breadth of learner evidence rather than confined to individual tasks. So credit evidence against AOs where appropriate. So if there is more evidence of the learner's thought given to roles or to logistics throughout the portfolio, that would be creditable. just to uh, sort of dip into the marking of this one here um ao1 the specific um, demand is that learners recall and communicate appropriate knowledge and understanding of performance and production principles um, and that subject specific terminology is used accurately on occasion um, in this case the learner has um, entered band two in this example in terms of breadth of detail similarly in terms of ao3 the learners, um, the learners appropriately analysed and evaluated performance requirements, judging and reaching suitable conclusions. And in this case, the learners um, analysed and evaluated um, again into band two. So you'll see there's there's some level of detail in that that evaluation there within the presentation. Moving on to the next task. Um, this is the baseline skills assessment produced by the learner. This was undertaken in this example as a text-based exercise, but um, would not necessarily be so. Again, the evidence formats, uh, like like all synoptic projects, are are open to some extent. Um, I would say that the learner has attempted this appropriately, in that you can see we've uh, we've got a list of skills. Um, some hard skills, some soft skills, um, and we've got a rating based on one to five here um, against where the learner was at the start of this project and where they intend to be at the end of the project. Um, in this case, there's some limited reference to technical performance skills, which rather limits the detail of this learner's baseline skills assessment. However, there are skills related to planning and development. So in this skills assessment, the learner has gone some way to analysing their skills and graded them accordingly on their one to five scale. It's not completely clear if the second column represents ongoing development or targets for the learners. So there's some ambiguity there in the learner's evidence. The skills reference relates to the development of the project, but there is little detail, as we've said, in terms of the technical performance skills, which is where this, um, where this piece of evidence lacks somewhat. So this could be usefully developed to consider skills required for the performance in the role of a dancer and choreographer to feed into the development of the rehearsals, um, dancer and choreographer being the, the learner's proposed performance role in their, uh, in their initial presentation. So this evidence could feed into AO1 and AO2. In this case, the learner is shown in AO1 that they can recall and communicate basic knowledge and understanding of performance and production principles but subject specific terminology is basic and inconsistent. Okay, so moving on, the next piece of evidence from the learner is a rehearsal plan. 
Um, in this rehearsal plan, the learner has broadly outlined sections of the piece to develop, be developed along with dates. So we've got some evidence of time timelining and thought given to development. Learner references equipment, although this is limited in terms of specifics, um, you can see that there's reference to video on a phone there. Um, the learner does not consider specific performance techniques to be applied though uh, within this rehearsal plan. Notably, the learner though also provided short video clips and verbal conclusions drawn from rehearsals, which allowed for greater evidence against AO2 in terms of application of knowledge and AO4 in terms of demonstrating application of equipment, material and techniques. So in this case, the paper rehearsal or the written rehearsal plan um, was expanded upon by video evidence, short clips, uh, pre and post rehearsal, which uh, were very much to the credit of the learner in this case. Notably, the learner makes no reference to the identified pre-production choreography role, which somewhat limits assessment of skills and developments in this respect within the rehearsal plan. So as a standalone piece of evidence, this lacks some detail, but combined with video evidence provided some useful accessible work for the learner. So again, the, the message here is, is to look at the variety of potential evidence and consider it holistically. Moving on to the technical plan, uh, we can see an excerpt from the technical plan here. Uh, in this session, uh, the learner, due to lockdown, undertook the performance at home, making use of the available equipment, um, which was a very, very laudable approach. Um, the approach was to be applauded, and the diagram shows basic placement and indicates equipment. You can see there that we've got a, a diagram of the learner's um, patio, and we've got um, Alexa playing music from inside for the learner to, to work to. It would have been useful for the learner to have expanded this commentary to consider the available resources to demonstrate critical thoughts given to the approach. So there was, there was plenty of space here for the learners to consider the situation in which they found themselves and how they'd uh, developed the material and the performance with regard to that. Um, this could have been written alongside a technical specification uh, as required by the task to allow for assessment of the learner's intentions and perhaps discuss the limitations of the available technical and staging resources. So again, there's some limitation here in terms of the, the learner's technical planning, although we've broadly got a stage plan and we've got the implication of a technical spec via the uh, staging layout, the position of sound and lights. Um, so a limited piece of work um, that would have been reinforced by, by further consideration in this case. Moving on, um, looking at the promotional evidence here, um, the learner has developed a timeline for promotion, including a variety of channels for release. So we can see social media, uh, we can see posters here. Um, the learner has not produced evidence to indicate critical thought given to the mediums or to the target audience. So there's some limitations here to the, the underlying thought given to the promotional material. The learner has produced a script and an audio clip also for a radio advertisement and also a promotional poster. The script is, uh, is well thought out and infers a target audience as well as linking back to the social media promotion. So there's some good work there, some good understanding of the, of the rounded nature of promotion. The promotional poster gives some details of the performance, um, although it doesn't reference the venue or a way of accessing the performance, um, which is uh, not in its favour, I suppose. Um, the social media advert references a live stream, which is a, a useful concept that the learner has explored. The learner has produced appropriate materials, but has not contextualised them uh, in terms of the performance. The materials and format show some clear thought, but this evidence could have been developed substantially by a promotional plan which allow the learner to contextualize their activities and development of materials. So some good work in terms of the promotional outcomes, but um, a limited um, amount of critical thought in evidence. Um, looking at the evaluation here, which, um, which took the part of the, uh, which was drawn in part from the, the learner's logbook. Um, so the learner evaluated their project via the logbook. Uh, the learner has produced some evidence to feed into the assessment of AO5. Uh, the evaluation shown above is summative and does lack some ongoing commentary in relation to development. However, the learner does identify some key points and structures the evaluation well in terms of issues encountered, things which went well and areas for development 
and time management. Um, typically, AO5 would also be graded to include ongoing evaluation. In isolation, this evidence would be best considered as AO1 band, uh, sorry, AO5 band one, so it's quite limited in terms of a standalone document. Um, learners manage the project, including preparation and planning of a limited range of project stages, timeframes, and resources. Uh, the learner provides comments on some of their approaches, skills, and accomplishments. So, in conclusion, based on this evidence, the learner is operating at band, in bands one and two for AOs one, two, three, and five. Um, additional video evidence of practical activities, performance, and commentary from the learner would feed into their grading, as indeed it did for this learner. Um, it's important to consider all available evidence against each band to make a holistic and fair judgment for each learner. Um, I'm going to hand you back over to Kelly, who will talk you through some general guidance when giving feedback. But uh, do we have any questions at this point? There's none come uh, through yet, Graham, but we can just leave it um, just a little while longer if anyone does want to ask any questions at this point before I do move on to feedback. Please do feel free that if you do have any questions to pop them into the question box and either myself or Graham will endeavour to answer them. Okay, it doesn't appear that any are coming through, Graham, so we can, I think, continue, but we will keep an eye on that question box. Thank okay, you. thanks Thanks for that, Graham. That was really um, informative. So now I'd like to talk you through, like Graham said, some general guidance when giving feedback and the documentation that is available to support you. And then I'll hand back to Graham, who will then talk you through some more specific guidance on feedback and resubmissions. So when giving the feedback to your learners, there is some general guidance. And for each of the five assessment objectives, you should let the learner know what band they got. You should reference the grading descriptors when giving feedback. So for example, for assessment objective one about recalling knowledge and showing understanding, you would be mentioning their use of key terminology and accurate use of knowledge in their project. It is good practice to focus your comments on what the learner has done well and make your comments general rather than overly focused and specific to the parts of the synoptic project. The comments should also encourage the learners to self-regulate and be self-critical. And your feedback cannot give explicit instructions. So for example, you can't say things like, you need to describe X and explain the importance of Y. Keep the comments general as it is meant to be in a holistic view. Again, as it is an holistic view, you can't give feedback on specific sections. So comments like, in section one, you need to include information about X, wouldn't be appropriate. And the final point ties in with the previous two points. You should avoid listing all the negative points for the learners to address. You can take a look at the sample portfolios to get ideas about the comments and do check the Synoptic Project Delivery Guide for additional information. Here is an example document for the assessor to give feedback to the learner and the feedback can be given to the learners after the EQA review has occurred. And this particular document is included within uh, the course file documents in the, um, on, on Qual Hub. There is another option available which is better suited to the synoptic project which is contained within the grading calculator. On the third sheet of the grading calculator called learners, are the five assessment objectives and bandings. You can copy and paste this into a different spreadsheet or Word document and use it for giving feedback. You can circle the relevant banding they achieved and write your comments for each of the assessment objectives. Again, these are only suggestions and you don't have to use them. I'm going to hand back to Graham, who will talk you through some more specific guidance on feedback and resubmissions. Okay, so just uh, looking here at feedback and resubmissions. So just to clarify, learners should have one resubmission opportunity for the synoptic project. Um, feedback should be given following assessment and IQA of the first submission and then again after the final submission. So uh, in this case, as, as Kelly pointed out earlier, differently to, uh, to as we've approached this in previous sessions, um, you will assess and IQA the first submission but you won't put the grades on the portal um, 
until you're satisfied that the learners have had a, an opportunity for a final submission, which we will then assess an IQA, and then we'll be subject to external quality assurance. Um, the feedback can highlight areas which have been achieved to show the grading logic, so you can justify your grading by showing areas uh, which the learner have achieved by using uh, language from the AOs, as we've briefly talked about in the previous section. Um, as Kelly's pointed out, the feedback must not identify specific activities to complete or target specific grading. So, um, as Kelly says, you shouldn't uh, say to get Y, you should do X, or to get a distinction, you should do this. Um, effective feedback, I would suggest to learners, is concise and specific. So, think smart, think about specific, measurable, achievable, and time bound feedback useful here to specify a resubmission date for the learners in most situations i would suggest for example um, the iqa commentary and you'll be aware of the importance of the iqa's part in this the iqa commentary to yourselves as the assessor should be used to revise assessor grading and feedback before returning to the learner and that's both for the first submission and for the final submission obviously if um, your IQA looks at your assessment and your feedback and deems that that needs to be modified and it's already gone back to the learners, then the, uh, the quality cycle is, is somewhat broken. So you need to make sure that your IQA happens after your assessment, but before your feedback and grading goes back to the learners. Um, I'll now go back over to Kelly, who will go through the internal quality assurance process. Thanks, Graham. So I'm now going to briefly talk to you, um, to you about the quality assurance process, and I'm going to start with the internal quality assurance process. So the internal quality assurance uh, is the final check of the synoptic project before the EQA review and grades going on the portal. The internal quality assurer should be able to correctly assess and moderate the work, so therefore the IQA should be knowledgeable on the content, competent on the grading system, so they're able to challenge any grading decisions, and not be involved with the teaching of the learners. Now, if it is your first year of delivery, we recommend the IQA sample to be about 50% of the learner cohort. The sample should contain a wide range of learners, grades, assessors, and so on. And after the first year, the sampling can be reduced. And while there is no specific number on the size of sample, it still should be large enough to give the IQA a picture of, what, of the work that has been completed. So we would recommend between 20% and a 40% sample. Grades can be given to the learners after this IQA has been completed, but you should inform the learners that this may change based on the EQA's review. And when it is business as usual, those grades would need to be submitted to us usually by the 31st of March each year. And your EQA will then sample the work and the assessment decision will either be agreed, banked or rejected. And then your EQA will discuss their findings, give you a very supportive action plan and then the new grades, once that has been actioned, will then be banked for those learners. Again, when it is business as usual, following the EQA review, you can then give your learners feedback and they are entitled to one resubmission. And learners are to use the same synoptic project brief and work. They have another 21 hours in supervised sessions and the work is then assessed and internally quality assured again. And then the resubmission grade is to be with us by the 31st of March each year. Please note though, for this academic session, in line with our approach to awarding and assessment, the adaptations confirm that resubmissions, um, as Graham mentioned on the previous slide, should be managed internally within the centre and that assessment records should be kept up to date to provide a full audit trail of resubmission and that the first submission grades are not to be entered onto the portal. And in fact, it's the final grade for this session that should be submitted and entered onto the portal by the 27th of May, 2022. So on this slide, this will show you that you can determine the grade achieved for the synoptic project by using the grading calculator that's contained within QualHub. On here, you can place the learner's name and place the band achieved against each assessment objective. This will then calculate the grade that has been achieved for the internal assessment or the synoptic project. So with this example, you can see that with learner A, the bands that they achieved were a two, 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 one and a two, 
giving them an overall grade of a level one distinction for their synoptic project. Whereas learner B got twos for every assessment objective and got a level two merit overall. This just shows how important assessment objective four is in terms of its weighting. So you can see that it is only assessment object, that's the only assessment objective that learner B did better on, but they jumped up two grades for the overall synoptic project grade. And lastly, before you let the learners know their grade, like we've said, the work does need to go through the internal quality assurance process. Now, Graham has already touched on the resubmissions for 2021-22, but I just want to recap on the key points for resubmissions this year. So once learners have been given their feedback um, from the centres, they are then, as we've said, permitted to one resubmission for their synoptic project. And for this year, the resubmission does involve, again, the same synoptic project, and the learner will use the feedback that has been given to make their improvements and they don't have to start from scratch. They can add or make changes to the work that has already been completed. And this year, in terms of the hours that they get to complete their resubmission, it is um, unlimited hours for them to complete their resubmission. Once the learners have completed their work, it then would be marked again, an internal quality assurance check performed and an external quality assurance review or visit arranged. And again, for complete clarity, the deadline for the resubmission grades for this uh, session is the 27th of May 2022 and the EQA review must be completed before the 31st of uh, July 2022. So again, I know we keep saying this, but just so it's really, really clear, I'm just going to um, go through a summary for this academic session. So learners are to complete the synoptic project and we have removed the requirement to complete it within a set number of hours. When completed, the assessor will mark it against the grading descriptors and fill in the grading calculator. The IQA will check the work and provide feedback to the assessor. Learners are then given their feedback and are permitted a resubmission opportunity. But as we've already said, this is going to be managed this year internally by the centre. And grades for the learner's first submission do not need to be entered onto portal, but assessment records should be kept up to date. And again, the final submission or the final resubmission grades need to be submitted to us on the portal by the 27th of May 2022 and the EQA review deadline is before July 31st of July 2022 to allow results to be confirmed by the end of July for performance tables. And lastly the EQA will check the work and either agree and bank the grades or reject the grading decisions and provide a very supportive action plan. So on this slide, I just wanted to provide you with a little bit of information uh, in preparation for submitting your grades, your final resubmission grades. So you can submit unit grades by selecting grading and then submit unit grades from the portal menu. You can search for your learners to submit unit grades using batch, forename, surname, centre learner reference or the NCFE learner number. You click to select the learners that you would like to submit grades for. And please note, unit grades should only be submitted once the work has been assessed and the sample has been internally quality assured. Once this has been done, please submit the applicable grade for each learner and the unit grades will be stored until your EQA banks them following a successful quality assurance review. Please do check the information that you're about to submit is correct as once the grades are submitted, you're unable to make any further amendments. Select the learners that you would like to submit the grades for and then select next. When you select a unit, you get the option to select a grade for each learner. And when you are finished selecting the grades, tick the declaration and complete the full name of your internal quality assurer before selecting submit. And confirmation of a successful unit grade submission will then appear on your screen. Please do save or print a copy of this screen for your records. If you require any further support, again, do check out our portal support guide or contact our customer support team who will be able to help. I'm now gonna hand back to Graham who will explain in more detail the external quality assurance and process for this academic session. Thanks, Kelly. Um, I think it's worth pointing out we've got, we've got some uh, really interesting questions from Fran here um, that I, I'd just like to address at this point, if that's okay. Um, yeah. 
So uh, Franz asked, uh, can you clarify, does this mean that all learners should be resubmitted or do we just resubmit those learners that could improve? So um, here, Fran, um, all learners should be given a resubmission opportunity. The learners may choose not to take that and that should be a learner decision um, rather than your decision, I would suggest. Um, so if a learner chooses to resubmit, they should be given time to, to undertake that resubmission. If a learner chooses not to resubmit, their first submission will become their final submission uh, by definition. So uh, that will be the grade that you entered on the portal. I hope that's clear. Um, another question here, um, IQA, um, I only have a group of seven students. Would you recommend IQA of the whole cohort? So we talk about percentages, but they're really only, it's really only a guide. Um, the function of the IQA is to satisfy themselves that assessment is uh, is appropriate and um, and is also consistent. So, fifty percent is a good guideline, um, but it might be in the case of a small number of students, in this case seven, that it might be appropriate to undertake IQA of all those learners. Certainly, I would think um, that would give you a range of grades and potentially a range of disciplines. Uh, so, again, the IQA should satisfy themselves that they've looked at the best available range um, across across your assessment to satisfy themselves that that's consistent. So, uh, in answer to your question, yes, I would suggest that it would be appropriate to look at all students in that case. Um, final question here uh, regards performance skills. You mentioned that a solo performance might be as part of an ensemble. Um, so just to clarify that point first, if the solo performance is as part of an ensemble, it should clearly allow the learners to demonstrate their solo skills rather than their ensemble skills. So um, Fran goes on to say, all my cohort are actors. Could they collaboratively plan and perform a series of monologues that are closely linked in theme as one performance event. Yes, I don't see any issue with that um, particularly. Um, the issue as always with collaboration um, is ensuring that the learners produce individual evidence, which is clearly accessible, uh, sorry, clearly accessible as such. Uh, but in terms of the actual performance, a series of monologues would very clearly be a solo performance. So I, I would have no issues with that. So I think they're, they're all the questions for the moment. Um, unless anyone else has got any questions there. Uh, really useful questions. Okay, super. So um, moving on then. Uh, what I'd like to look at now, as Kelly said, uh, is the internal quality assurance process. So um, as, as mentioned in terms of the timeline for the assessment, IQA and external quality assurance of this synoptic project, the final stage is the external quality assurance review. On Qualhub, in the delivery and learner support tab, we do have a section regarding the EQA review, which you may want to view to help prepare you and also we'll send out links to those, those documents um, as we confirm the review date. If you've already registered your learners, then you'll have been assigned an external quality assurer. Um, if you haven't registered learners at this point, I would strongly suggest that you do so because that will give you access to resources like the external quality assurer and indeed the synoptic project. Um, in terms of external quality assurance, you're entitled to two free reviews or visits from your EQA. And it's worth contacting them now so you can arrange your visit. Um, as many will have started booking in appointments already. As you can imagine, the EQA workforce gets busier as we approach assessment windows. Um, these visits might be in person um, or they could be undertaken as a remote review. This is rather dependent on what, uh, what continues to uh, tra uh, transpire in the, the wider world. At the moment, um, for our sector, um, I'm more than happy for face-to-face uh, -face visits to, to occur. Um, that may change though, according to what happens uh, in terms of lockdowns and so on and so forth. The EQA review deadline, as previously mentioned, is before the 31st of July, 2022, to allow for results to be confirmed by the end of July for your performance tables. Um, some of the key things that the IQA will be checking will be your internal quality assurance processes. So looking at how 
yourself as assessors and IQAs have interacted. A sample of portfolios to check your assessment decision, and that will be drawn across a range of grades, assessors, um, potentially also disciplines uh, in, in performance skills and art and design. Um, we may look at your schemes of work as well in terms of, uh, of looking at delivery and uh, particularly in terms of assessment timelining for the synoptic project. Um, it will also include wider aspects such as your centre policies and procedures, um, CPD records for your, your course team and also staff CVs. Um, in terms of synoptic project though, primarily our focus would be the IQA processes and assessment decisions, which will be obviously the most important part in terms of, uh, of moving your learners forwards. You'll need to have all the learner work available for the EQA to check. Um, the EQA will then either agree with your assessment decisions uh, and the grades will be submitted um, and banked, or um, if there's some inconsistency, uh, we will reject those grades which are inconsistent, and this can be from grading too harshly as well as too leniently. Um, the EQA will have a discussion with you um, during the review, give you some actions via a very supportive action plan, and then the new grades will be back for those learners. If the grades are changed by the EQA on the first submission, um, sorry, I should say, if the grades are changed by the EQA, this does not affect the learner's capacity to resubmit. So if in uh, this case we, we've got a learner who's put in their uh, first submission uh, onto, the, onto the portal and they still have a resubmission opportunity, um, that's not affected by the grade bank by the EQA. After the EQA review, feedback can be given to your learners and they are entitled to one resubmission um, under normal circumstances. Here, this year, um, we're, we're looking, as we previously specified, that the final submission grades should be on the portal. So if the learner have had an internal resubmission opportunity, they wouldn't have another resubmission opportunity. Um, so for this academic year, just to clarify, 2021-22, the EQA will be only looking at the final submission in this session. That is, the EQA should be looking at any resubmissions which have been made rather than first submissions. Okay. So uh, moving on to a, a bit of a summary here uh, for EQA reviews in this session, ensure that you discuss and agree any, any adaptations with your EQA and the adaptations for both art and design and performance skills are available on Core Hub on the, on the subject pages. Um, a point to make here is that the EQA review of first submissions may be possible in a supportive capacity. So although we've said that your EQA will only be looking at the final submission grades if you feel that you require support um, for your first submissions your EQA will be able to provide you within our subject area um, a review to to look at those as part as one of your two free reviews uh, bearing in mind that if we use this review or use your first review in this capacity um, then that will count as your your first free review um, so if you do want a review um, on your first submissions, and it's important to note here that it should be your first submission so you've got assessment and IQA in place rather than um, during the course of the, the synoptic project before you've assessed anything, um, then do please work with your EQA to uh, book that review in. Once the work for the cohort has been assessed, graded internally quality assured, the final submission grade should be banked on the portal, as we previously said, and then the EQ will be able to select an appropriate sample from those grades. So the sampling process is led by the EQA, looking at the grades you submitted, and then we supply a list of learners we'd like to see for the review. Um, I would Please encourage you to have regular dialogue with your EQA about a learner's progress, as this will help with planning and agreeing a date for the review to take place. Um, and again, just to clarify that, the EQA, must, uh, EQA review must take place on final submissions. Um, so your final submissions must be subject to EQA review, otherwise the grades will not be banked. Okay, so I'll hand back over to Kelly here. 
So we have now reached the end of the webinar. We uh, we are we've got about three minutes left, but myself and Graham are more than happy to stay on for as long as needed to answer any questions. So we will keep an eye on that question box, um, and we'll answer questions if they come in. Um, just a final note: if you do have any further questions after the webinar, then do uh, please do contact your EQA. And remember that your learners do need to be registered to have an EQA allocated to your centre. Also, please do get in touch with me directly using my email, which is kellyjohnson at ncfe.org.uk. And if I'm unavailable, our provider development um, email is provider.development at ncfe.org.uk. And do visit our website for more information on, on all our VSERT technical awards. So whilst we are checking um, to see if any questions are coming through, I would also just like to put this final slide on for more information. So on this uh, this particular slide, I've included some of the useful links for you to refer to if you have uh, if you require further information and support. And these links do include our approach to awarding and assessment, the adaptation blueprint, and the quality assurance policy for this academic session. Like I said, myself and Graham will remain on the webinar. Um, should you have any additional questions, if you do not, please do feel free to leave the webinar. And when you do leave the webinar, really appreciate it if you could complete the short evaluation to help um, us make any future improvements and or changes to the service and support that we provide. So lastly, uh, I'd just like to say thanks again, everyone, uh, for attending the webinar. And on behalf of everyone here at NCFE, we do wish you a safe and successful year.